Hi, this is Kendrick at worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about sepsis, shock, and systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So these are three terms that uh, often get confused, and we're going to talk about what the difference is between uh, among all of them. But let's start out with uh, SIRS, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. The criteria listed below um, are, are what constitute SIRS. You have to have a, a body temperature less than 36 degrees or greater than 38, heart rate greater than 90, uh, a respiratory rate greater than 20 breaths per minute, or uh, an arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide less than 4.3, um, 32 millimeters uh, mercury. Or you have to have white blood cell count less than 4,000 or greater than 12,000. And so uh, the way I remember this is I use, uh, I use the SIRS as a mnemonic. So the first S I use for speed, and that can refer to the heart rate or the respiratory rate. The I um, for uh, in inflammatory or inflammation. Uh, which is the white blood cells. The um, R uh, stands for red hot. It can also be cold, but uh, just remember temperature. And S again for speed, so referring to the heart rate. So um, these are the main criteria that constitute SIRS, and SIRS can be caused by any number of things, but the key to this is inflammation. So the way I like to think about SIRS or, or sepsis or shock um, is if you think about when you get an infection. Say you get a, a cut that's infected and that area around the cut gets real swollen and red um, because all the blood vessels are kind of opening up and allowing everything to drain in there so you can get an effective inflammatory response. So you get recruitment of white blood cells, um, and you get uh, all these cytokines that are being released to tell uh, to tell the uh, inflammatory process to begin, to tell the vessels to vasodilate and um, to become more porous. So now take that small cut um, and put it all over your body. So all over your body, you've got these signals, these cytokines, telling your body to um, to start inflammation or the inflammatory process. So you got all your vessels vasodilating, and you got uh, fluid leaking out everywhere. And as you can imagine, um, with this, you're gonna you're gonna run into a lot of complications. So, so. Th um, the kinds of things that you can imagine starting off this kind of cascade would be an autoimmune disorder where the body's kind of attacking itself, pancreatitis where you get widespread inflammation, burns, which is uh, often a you know kind of a full body inflammation type thing, uh, vasculitides, complications of surgery where you get large amounts of inflammation, especially in the focus of the of the surgery. Adrenal insufficiency, pulmonary embolism, complicated aortic aneurysm, cardiac tamponade, anaphylaxis, and drug overdose. And you can kind of imagine with all of these how the body is mounting this full-scale attack uh, all over the place. And, uh, and it leads to, to the complications involved um, in SIRS. So next definition is sepsis. And sepsis is basically SIRS caused by infection. So um, in order to make this diagnosis of sepsis, you got to have two or more of these criteria. So the body temperature, the heart rate, uh, the respiratory rate of the white blood cells. And you got to have some source of infection. So usually this diagnosis can be made as easily as if uh, there's an open wound or if you have a line that you, um, a line that's in that's been in for a long time, you can almost assume that that's it. It's a, a sepsis because uh, 
because you have a foreign body in there, but especially if you have a positive culture. So that's a, those are good enough reasons to uh, start an antibiotic, which we'll talk about in a second. So severe sepsis is just sepsis when you know that something that the organs are getting damaged. Uh, so organs can get damaged in sepsis by um, either the inflammation itself, uh, cytokines uh, inducing an inflammatory respo response that uh, essentially attacks the organs, or by just hypoperfusion, which is probably the biggest mechanism here. Where remember we're talking about uh, fluid leaking out everywhere. That means, or the or the vessels dilating everywhere. That means nowhere is going to be getting uh, the kind of uh, perfusion from blood that you uh, expect. And so when we talk about hypoperfusion, we're going to mention uh, the most sensitive areas to that, which be the kidney um, and the central nervous system are the biggest ones. Um, DIC and acute respiratory distress syndrome are uh, other big signs of severe sepsis. And then if we want to call it shock, then we need the, some kind of organ damage plus hypotension. So the hypotension is going to be less than 60 degrees. Uh, sorry, 60 millimeters mercury systolic. And um, this is without pressors. So uh, a lot of people are going to be in shock, but we're going to be keeping them up closer to 100 uh, systolic with pressors, sometimes higher than that, but, uh, but it's without the meds that uh, you get the definition of shock. Um but it is including uh, fluid resuscitation. So, so we're giving them fluids. They're not staying up above 60 systolic. So the risk factors for sepsis are, are age, immunosuppression. Um, so age could be the very young or the very old. Immunosuppression, anybody, uh, including diabetics, and uh, those who are on uh, immune modulating drugs, of course, HIV. And in this category, too, we can include um, a lot of uh, obstetric compli complications, are indicators for sepsis. You also have any, uh, any type of uh, trauma that induces or introduces. Uh, bacteria or foreign bodies into the body so anything that could uh, could uh, initiate a, a wide-scale uh, infection or uh, inflammation so the way that we treat this the first thing we got to do is um, make sure that they're getting uh, enough air uh, oxygen so uh, that's the first step is is respiration. Uh, you want to get them on a vent in most cases. And then our next uh, worry is perfusion. So we need to make sure that they're getting enough uh, blood around to the vital organs. So um, the first thing that we do to do this is to get them a lot of fluids and blood products. If those aren't going to cut it, then we have to go to pressors. Now, choosing uh, to to introduce pressors is uh, a double-edged sword because it's going to uh, it's going to do just what it says. It's going to vasoconstrict in the periphery. Uh, it's going to press the blood vessels, and that means we are sacrificing peripheral blood flow uh, to uh, save the uh, central nervous system and the kidneys usually. So putting people on pressors is often a, not a great sign, especially if you are on multiple pressors. You know, somebody on three pressors, uh, it's a high likelihood that they're, they're going to have long-term complications. 
So, and then we also want to identify and treat the cause. If we think this is septic, then we're going to go to our uh, antibiotics, which we'll talk about on the next slide. And if we think it's an anaphylactic situation, some kind of a hypersensitivity, uh, Benadryl or um, other histamine blockers uh, should be used to, uh, or epinephrine should be used to uh, stop the hypersensitivity. Hemodialysis may be necessary and uh, steroids may be necessary, uh, especially in adrenal insufficiency. So the antimicrobials that we're going to use are vancomycin plus uh, something else. So the vancomycin, of course, covers our methicillin-resistant uh, Staph aureus. And then we're going to add in a third or fourth generation cephalosporin to help us cover uh, some of the gram negatives. Or you could do a carbapenem or a piptazo or a ticocillin clavulanate. So... Um, we could use a lot of help if you want to uh, help out. First of all, please leave a comment below and help us to know how to make these videos better. Uh, we know that they could be uh, a little more entertaining, um, but also let us know if there's more information that we, you think we should be including in here or anything that we got wrong in this video. And uh, other... Uh, it, there's lots of other things that you can do as well, so if you want to email at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org or visit us on the website. Uh, that would be much appreciated. Thank you.